Welcome to the four-part introduction to the entrepreneurial mindset or e-mindset lecture. I'm Dr. Dale Caldwell, a professor and executive director of the Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Welcome to the course. Uh, what we're going to talk about uh, in four separate sessions relates to uh, uh, one, an introduction. I'm going to teach you to um, think about yourself in new ways and introduce yourself in new ways, the kind of above the iceberg and below the iceberg uh, section. We'll do that uh, very briefly in a, in a short first session. Then we'll move on to the entrepreneurial mindset. What is this entrepreneurial mindset or the e-mindset? Then we're going to talk about intelligent influence, a framework that will help you develop or enhance the entrepreneurial mindset. And finally, we're going to talk about how do you implement the e-mindset. So really the objective of, uh, of this session is, um, um, is really to encourage students to do the following four things. The first is to think deeply about who they are. Everything relates to a self-analysis. If you're really gonna grow, you have to go inward first before you can look externally. Too often classes and training programs are so focused on the external, they're not as sustainable as they could be. Learn the basics of the e-mindset to use influence to enhance the e-mindset, and then begin to implement the e-mindset. As I said, whether you want to be an entrepreneur, have your own business, or just be successful in school, this idea of e-mindset is such a critical part of, of, of success. So this section one is introduction and, and self-reflection. So I want to begin by really talking about uh, who I am and, and what this, this Rothman Institute of Innovation Entrepreneurship is. Uh, to, to really let you know that we are working with folks every day around this idea of the entrepreneurial mindset to really help people become successful at what they do and how they do what they do. So our mission statement is to support, promote, and research entrepreneurship with a special focus on family and veteran businesses, as you'll see in a, in a second. Our, our programs include a student entrepreneurship programs. I teach a class called Family Business Management. Uh, the the uh, Institute has been around for 30 years. Um, really working with students to really help them become better entrepreneurs, to work with family businesses, at least to understand what entrepreneurship is all about. We have a family business alliance where we have a membership for family businesses, where we help the businesses become that much more successful. That's been around for, for 30 years. We have family business awards. Our 28th annual family business award is coming up in uh, October. And the focus of that is really looking at businesses whose revenues are under 10 million and over 10 million and really recognizing the most successful family businesses of, uh, of the year, of 2020 now. And our Veterans Launching Ventures program, which has really been growing and become very, very successful, we actually have a national program that we, uh, we've launched this summer. And the idea is to identify veterans and uh, or family, immediate family members of veterans and help them develop business plans, but also to grow their business. So we're very deep in the, in the veteran space. And then our small business series, where we have some amazing lectures, some CEOs and, and, and others to really talk about small businesses. So we are deep in this space and entrepreneurial mindset really undergirds everything that we do and everything that we work on. So one of the other things that we've just started uh, last year was something called the Family Business Week. And so our idea is that on the fourth week in October, we encourage people to identify and celebrate a family business. So the website is familybusinessweek.com. We want people to do that every day, but we want a special week. Uh, I know there's Small Business Saturday and others, but we want this focused on family businesses, which, which are really the largest segment of the global uh, economy. More than 80% of the businesses out there are actually family businesses. In addition, we have, uh, I have a TV show called Family Business World. And so it's once a week, it's every Thursday on rvntv.tv at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. And what I do is I interview family businesses. This is Debbie Schaefer, uh, the CEO of Mrs. G TV and Appliances, a third generation woman owned business that's over 80 years old. And to really celebrate family businesses. So if you know of a family business or you're part of a family business, I would love to talk to them on the show. And then what we've been trying to do is, is, um, um, is really expand this Veterans Launching Ventures program. Veteran businesses are so important to the world, um, especially to the United States, that we really want to really support and celebrate these businesses and help them become as successful as possible. We have a website called Veteran Business World where we, uh, uh, we have a number of programs for veteran businesses. 
We also have a YouTube channel, the Rothman Institute of Entrepreneurship channel that highlights many of our videos uh, and I encourage you to check that out. So one of the things that I'm doing, we're in a very difficult time now with the pandemic, with the uh, uh, dealing with issues of racism, the murder in Minneapolis and other things. And so one of the things I'm encouraging everyone, whether you're in business or not, to really check in to see what zone are you in. And I created this self-reflection map to really help people do that. The first zone is what I call the panic zone and where people are really panicking. They're worried about their future. They, they're, they're a little on edge. They're, uh, um, they're critical of other people. They enjoy sharing negative information. And so the goal is really to move out of this panic zone into something that I call the awareness zone. And, and so what do I mean by that? I mean that people are aware of their unhealthy emotions, that they, they recognize that they're not alone, that they try to develop solutions to their problems and they're trying to stop self-sabotage. But the idea is to move from the awareness zone to what I call the success zone. And in this zone, people are grateful for what they have. They're seeking out positive information. They're, they're implementing solutions to their problems, but they're also using mindfulness to relax and refocus. And if many of you know mindfulness, it's really about putting the cell phones away and just sitting and being present in the moment, feeling your breath flow throughout your body. That has wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, effects on the, on the brain and, and the body as a whole. If you look at neuroscientists that, uh, uh, they talk about the prefrontal cortex providing, uh, after mindfulness, greater awareness of thoughts and emotion, and the amygdala that controls emotion to have greater control of your emotions, and the hippocampus allows you to enhance your memory, all by taking time, 15 minutes a day or so, to do, uh, to do mindfulness. Um, again, I created this mindfulness pyramid, so if you begin to look at mindfulness, um, um, and you do it daily, you get greater self-awareness, sustainable regulation of emotions, uh, increased focus, clearer personal goals and success in life and at work. And so I say all that because part of what developing the entrepreneurial mindset is about is really being self-aware and really trying to be the strongest self you can be. I also began by this idea of influence and that, that it's a word that we hear all the time, but people don't really think about what it means and they take it for granted. So so I'd like to, to take a minute and ask you, what does influence mean to you? I'd love for you just to write down what influence means to you. Um, it's a word you hear all the time, but, but what is the definition? They say she's an influencer, he's an influencer, he's influential, she's influential. But what does that mean? And we'll explore more about this influence in the second session. But then I have a, what I call the Influence Hall of Fame exercise, where I ask people to reflect on, on what who or what has had the most influence on society over the last 200 years? What leader has had the most influence on society? And this is a fun exercise. Uh, I'd love for you to take some time and just write that down. Um, what business person has had the most influence? What inventor has had the most influence? What product has had the most influence? And finally, what company has had the most influence over the last 200 years? And as I do this with groups, it's fascinating to see depending on the age or the demographics, who they pick for each one of these categories. So I encourage you to, to write that down as well. Now I wanna get into the introductions and I, and I wanna use an example to introduce uh, myself in a little more depth is that we've all seen icebergs and we know that most of the iceberg is below the waterline. Um, and I use this, I call the cultural iceberg to really talk about things we can see, that often we define ourselves by things we can see yet not really who we are. And so I'm gonna introduce myself this, this way. So um, just my academic experience, I got a BA in um, economics from Princeton and got an MBA in finance from the Wharton School and a doctorate in uh, education administration from Seton Hall University, um, completed a, a program at the Harvard Kennedy School and a coaching program at Rutgers University. So that's above the iceberg. They say, oh Dale, you went to these expensive schools and, and so on, that's who you are. But that's not really who I am. And the same thing for my professional experience. I'm the executive director of the Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Fairleigh Dickinson University, CEO of a consulting firm called Strategic Influence. I was a senior manager at Deloitte Consulting. I was a deputy commissioner in the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs and the executive director of the Newark Alliance. And for you young people listening, one of the things I wanted to do was have a senior position in the public, the private and the nonprofit sectors to get a sense of where things worked. And so that's my above the iceberg. Now a little bit about, about who I am and, and what I think. So, so, so who I am, this picture depicts more of who I am than, than the education and professional experience. So this is a picture of my dad on the left. 
uh, who now lives with me, my parents, my dad's 86, my mom's 85, and they've moved here. Ralph Abernathy in the center, who was Dr. King's right-hand person, and Dr. Martin Luther King, who was quoted often as we're dealing with some of the social, uh, social unrest now. Uh, but this was in 1965 at a press conference to integrate the Boston public schools. So you say, well, what does that have to do with you, Dale? Well, th this, this idea of how people interact, Dr. King was, was really about bringing people together and having people work together. Um, I'm about this, which is why I love talking about how people develop, about the entrepreneurial mindset. Um, here's a picture of the marching, that same march in 1965. Again, my dad, Dr. King, and Ralph Abernathy. Um, so this is really so much about, about who I am. And these are below the surface things that you would never, never figure out looking at my resume. But um, my passions in life are more about this. So now I want to turn the tables and I want to ask each of you to look at this cultural iceberg and uh, think about the things above the iceberg and the things below the iceberg. What is it that people don't know about who you really are? And so I want to, in this first session, I want to go through... Uh, you, know, you to go through some questions and really write down the answers to these questions. How are you viewed by others above the iceberg? Begin to think about how are you viewed? What are people saying about you um, based on what they see? And especially those that people that don't know you. And it's important to be aware of that. Do people view your mindset as incremental or entrepreneurial? <coughs> if people asked if you were incremental or entrepreneur, <coughs> excuse me, we'll talk about that more. What would they say? What do people not know about your below the iceberg self? Really think about some of those things that really define who you are. And is your below the iceberg mindset incremental or entrepreneurial? What is the reality? And are you willing to change or enhance your below the iceberg mindset? So, uh, so this really ends our first, um, um, the first session. I want you to begin to think about those questions. It'll begin to prepare you for the next stage and really understanding and identifying the entrepreneurial mindset.